Church of God in Christ, let's go! saved because of the blood. We're washed because of the blood. We're clean because of the blood. And we're set apart because of the blood. Today as we honor you, as we give you glory, as we acknowledge you as the high and all holy priest, and we're honored to serve in your priesthood but you get all the glory you get all of the praise hallelujah my soul doth magnify you speak to us this morning use these lips of clay to say a word in our, our hearts today By the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be a piercing, a breaking through, an anointing that flows, a power released in this place today. And Father, 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 we're going to give you glory for it. We're going to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. So put those hands together now and let's praise him. Go with me now. Is go still up? That's right. Matthew 28, 18, 19, and 20. Luke 16, 15, and 16. And Romans 12, 1 and 2. Pray with me. Lord, speak now. Speak now. In Jesus' name, amen. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, You got to be with me. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Thank you. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Mark 16, verse 15, 16. And he said unto them, go, 
Go. Go. You hear Jesus? Go. When you walk out this house, I want you to hear Jesus say, go. When you get to your cars, I want you to hear Jesus say, go. In your bedroom, in your bathroom, at school, on the job, in the grocery store, I want you to hear the Lord, not Pastor Sims, but the Lord say, go. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The word for us this year is go. Just say it, go. You're gonna have me, you're gonna have me pushing you, pushing you to just hear it. I want it to go down in your spirit. I want it to become part of how you act, how you are. You are going in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that this singular symbol, syllable word, becomes transformative for the Mount Carmel Church. That this transformation shifts us to being a soul-winning church with a great heart for lost souls. It is my expectation that this single word, two letters, just two letters, a theme, God stirs up the world because he told the people to go. The world was transformed because he told the people to go. Didn't want us to get comfortable here here because he wants us to go stay with me it is an expectation that this single word will ring as a bell in the hearts and minds of every member of this congregation and that you will hear the call to arms against the enemy that you will throw off those comfortable garments and adorn yourself for battle to win lost souls for the Savior. The background of Matthew 18, or 28 rather, Jesus has risen. They have interacted with him. He's told them to go to Galilee. He's having some final words, final words to his disciples. Jesus came and spake to them. I want you to understand whose words these are. He says, first of all, I have all power. All power is given to me in heaven and earth. All power. He's about to give them a charge. And I love the fact before he gives them a charge, he tells them that the Lord, that, that God has given me all power over heaven and earth. I love it when somebody delegates a responsibility to me and the person who delegates that responsibility to me has all power and he's delegated it to me to accomplish a certain task. Well, here it is, Jesus starts off by saying, I got the power and I delegate to you this responsibility your responsibility is to go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Why don't you look at that go? Hello. 
This is real critical that you stay with me. Go. While they're getting it, just tell somebody to go. The devil doesn't want this to happen, but it will happen. We're going, we're going, we're going. I'm going to keep on going. Mark 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, go. This is Mark. It's a record of Jesus saying again, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be what? Damn. And I want you to take a look now at this passage of Scripture in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 46. Help them get those goals so that we can put those on the screen when I need them. And he said unto them from Luke, Thus it is written, and thus it behooves Christ to suffer and rise from the dead the third day. It was important that Jesus accomplished what he accomplished. He died. And he rose on the third day, he suffered, he bled, and he died. And then he says to them, Luke does not actually use the word go, but he gives them the same charge. Listen to it. He said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooves Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that, look, listen to this, repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning in Jerusalem. Repentance and remission should be preached in his name. There are so many people that say because Christ did it, he did it for the world, that everybody is saved. Everybody is saved. That's what, that's a, you know, theory out there because Christ did the work for us, everybody. But what they miss is the truth that if you are going to experience what God has for you, there is the responsibility for you to repent. Amen. Stop fooling everybody and letting them think that they're going to go to heaven. Amen. Because Christ has done the work. We're not asking them to do the work, but the scriptures declare that you've got to repent. What is repentance? What is repentance? Change of heart, preceded by remorse for sin, succeeded by what? Reformation of your life. That's repentance. Repentance is not just saying, God, I'm sorry, forgive me, and then you go do it again. But repentance is godly sorrow and then a commitment not to do that thing again. Repentance is required to experience salvation. Are you with me? And remission of sin. That is not something you can do. Remission of sin speaks to pardon. That was, the pardon was accomplished when Jesus paid the price. Say that with me. The pardon was accomplished when Jesus paid the price. And he said, do it in my name. By my command, it should be proclaimed that people should repent and by my name, they are pardoned. Pardon is offered by the authority of Christ to every nation. Oh my, to every nation. Listen to me. While we're here, most of us pretty much look alike, you know. Uh, most of us pretty much look alike. <laughs> but there's Africans in Africa, my brothers, they're worshiping. There are Asians in Asia worshiping, Australia and all of the continents. People are worshiping the Lord. And because of their repentance and because of their pardon given them by Jesus Christ, all nations can experience the same connection with Christ. All nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And it's interesting that Jesus told them to start at Jerusalem 
Because, you see, Jerusalem was a place where the murderer, where his murderers were. What does it say? He's, Jesus is saying, I want you to go and preach repentance and remission of sins to the people who murdered me. What an example. Not the people who love me, but I want you to go out to Jerusalem first to the people who hated me, people who tossed me away, people who spurned me and, and, and crucified me, tell them that there is repentance, that through repentance and remission, they can have a relationship eternally with the Lord. Luke 24 and 48 says, and ye are witnesses of these things. Thank you. Now put the larger print there. Ye are witnesses. Ye are witnesses. The others said, just told us to go. But Luke says the same thing. He says, go preach repentance and remission of sins. And he says, guess what? You all are the witnesses. We are witnesses. Now, we didn't see him die. Not none, ain't nobody here is been around that long. We didn't see him suffer, bleed, bleed and die. But there has been this mm, internal witness in our spirit that the Lord is alive and well. We understand he's a risen Savior because we've experienced it in our heart. Our inner man has seen the risen Savior because we opened our heart to receive Jesus. And so you are witnesses. What are you witnesses to? You're witnesses that look what he, done, he has done for me. What he did for you is completely different from what he's done to somebody else. Some of us, we were pretty clean, pretty good kids. You know, we scared, scared to do some things because, you know, daddy had a belt and mama had a switch, iron card, and a little bit of other things that she would work with. And so they kept us saved to the most, to, you know, to the, some extent. But some of y'all went the, the hard way, had some difficult experiences. Uh, but nevertheless, you with your difficult experience, you with your way in the world, you with your sin-trodden experiences, you now, because you've accepted Jesus Christ, you are a witness. that Jesus can transform lives. Your witnesses, and not only are your witnesses, but your beneficiaries of these things. Your beneficiaries of his life, his suffering, what was accomplished with his death and resurrection. We are witnesses today not that they can visibly see him, but we're able to experience all of what was accomplished in the depths of our souls. What a blessing it is to be able to testify that I once was lost in sin, but I found him and I'm glad. Say yes, Lord. We are the evidence of his mercy and his love. We should so live that others will be brought into the place where they see Jesus through us. Luke says in verse 24 and 49, he says, And behold, I send the promise of the Father unto you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power. Now, uh, passage in, in Mark says, I, I have all power on earth. And then Luke here now, he's telling them to just go to Jerusalem and wait because there's some power coming for you there. The, the promise of the Father, the promise which the Father made to them through the Savior. The promise was that they should be aided by the power of the Holy Ghost. He referred to the promise that God made. And that promise clearly was made back in the days of Joel concerning the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He says, wait in Jerusalem. Uh, until you be endued with power from and high. The power which 
would be given them by the descent of the Holy Spirit, the power of speaking in tongues, of working miracles, and of preaching the gospel under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Tell somebody the wait is over. <laughs> we don't have to wait any longer because the Holy Ghost has come and I can testify, I got it. Say yes, Lord. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is that outpouring that happened on the day of Pentecost. And it says you would be endued with power. Look at it. They're following me now. Endued with power. Acts 1 and 8 says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, where the murderers are. And in Judea. And in Samaria, where your, uh, your kin folks that you spurn and turn away are. And into the utmost parts of the earth. Every member needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If we're going to go, 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 go. If we're going to go, 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 go. If we're going to go, we need the power of the Holy Ghost. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, uh, that you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. And that's what I want to grab out of this passage. The words, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed to this world. Now this world, there's a spirit in this age and it's a spirit of self. It's all about me. No, it's not about you. It's all about me, it's all about me, it's all about me. Matter of fact, this self generation is so busy taking selfies. And, and some of them got a long hole where they can stick it out real far and then take selfies. It's, it's just, a, we're so self absorbed. Uh, our mind is going to have to get off of ourselves. Uh, we're troubled. The things we're troubled about kind of are all into. Uh, what we're thinking about all the time. It's all about what's happening to me. What, what, what's, what's going on with me. Even when they have successes, they're troubled because they wonder if it's going to last. And others are troubled because of all of their failures and their inability to escape them. It's all about us. We're troubled about our relationships our, or our lack thereof. We need to get our mind off of self. Listen. Forbes magazine says that the beauty industry, the beauty industry, now, that, now that's, that's quite an industry, is $445 billion, the beauty industry. Think about it. The face cream that you put on as a foundation, all right? The pencil you use to line your eyebrows. The lipsticks you use on your lips. The braids, the, the hat. Huh? Oh, that's little stuff. I'm talking about the braids now. I'm talking about those sewn in braids. I'm talking about the hair, you know, the <laughs> all about ourselves, you know. You spend a little bit of time in the mirror this morning, just wanted to make sure you look right. And then you took some cologne and you sprayed it on yourself because you want to smell right. It's, a, it's an industry that recognizes that we're about ourselves. Amen. We're about ourselves. Our closets are full of clothes because we're about ourselves. Our clothes are, amen, shoes running over. Why do the sisters get quiet when I talk like this? I'm, I'm going to get there. But it's, it's, we're all about ourselves. And this might be just maybe a good thing. Y'all stay with me over there. This, this might be a good thing. 
This might be a good thing. Hey. Mm -hmm. Say yes, Lord. Maybe, just maybe, there's an upside to being focused on yourself. Why don't we consider this? Consider this. Consider this question. And I'm going somewhere. Why on earth are you here? I, I want to I wanna know. If, if we're into ourselves, clearly we want to know why on earth are we here? Hmm. Maybe that's the question we ought to be asking ourselves. If we're going to be focused on ourselves, you would think that we want to understand why we are on the, ask somebody, ask your neighbor, ask them, why are you here? Why, why are you here? I'm talking about why are you on this earth? Why are you here? This is not something I want to escape you. I want you to think about it. Why are you on this earth? Are you saved? Yes, you're saved. Then why are you still here? Why didn't God, right after you accepted Jesus Christ, why didn't God take you to heaven? He left you here after he saved you? Why? Out of all the things you've gone through in life, and a lot of us have gone through much, why are we still here? Urban Sims, why are you still here? Huh? Deacon, why are you still here? Preachers, why are you still here? Choir members, why are you still here? Huh? Congregations, why are you still here? After all you've gone through, you've gone through divorce, you've gone through uh, broken relationships. You've gone through all kinds of financial issues. You've gone through all kinds of relationship is issues. And some way, somehow, you're still here. Why are you still here? Mm. The Winding Brothers sang the song, said, millions didn't make it, but I'm one of the ones who did. Mm. Think about it. A lot of folks are going on, but of the millions, billions who've gone on, you are one of the ones who's still here. Why are you still here? Maybe I suggest to you that one of the most significant and major reasons why you are still here is because God has such a love for lost souls. And he wants you to respond to the command. There are unsaved folks in your home, unsaved folks in your church, unsaved folks in your community, unsaved folks in your neighborhood. There should never be a question as to why am I still here? Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. He gave us a great commission. Matthew says, go. Mark says, go. Luke says, ye are witnesses. Second Corinthians says, ye are epistles written in the heart, known and read of men. There's some people who are never really going to ever come to church and have an experience with God through the church experience. But they are going to have that experience with God. Amen. They're going to have that experience with God because they watch your life. I'm going to say something to those who are running off in their own directions. Trying to do something for God. God does not anoint who you pretend to be. Thank you. He anoints 
who he's called you to be. So make sure what you are doing is not something that you just want to do. Make sure that it is something that God's called you to do. Uh, and God gives us a command. The Church of God in Christ, and I don't remember the full theme for this year, but it has to do with the fact that the church is seasoning for the world. That God wants to spread us out and sprinkle us on the world. Stay with me. Jonathan McReynolds spoke at the mission banquet. I was moved by the commandment to energize the people for foreign field. And in my heart, I said, I've got to go back and tell the saints to go. Don't get nervous because I'm not necessarily trying to send you to Africa with me. Because some of you, I don't care how long God talks, <laughs> you're not going to Africa. You made up in your mind, I'm not going. <laughs> and God from heaven won't get you off that seat to go to Africa. Moses. Huh. Moses. I got a people who need to be delivered. I want you to go to tell Pharaoh. Let my people go. Mm. Moses, go do it. Moses says, I can't talk. Can't talk. God asked him, who made your mouth? <laughs> if I send you to do something, mm, I love this. If I send you to do it, I have the power to straighten out your mouth. I've got the power to take the jitters away. I've got the power to take the nervousness away. Just do what I say. Go. Mm. 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 Moses, now you're at the Red Sea. <laughs> the enemy's behind. Mountains on each side. But that's okay, Moses. I already got that figured out. Because I want you to go. Stretch forth your rod. Still manifesting his power to bring deliverance for us. Stay with me. Mm. The two spies of the 12 go. Two see, all 12 of them see giants. All 12 of them see clusters of grapes. They see cattle with half so much milk that the milk is dripping on the ground. Mm. They see honeycombs with honey dripping off the comb. And they went back and said, it's a land of flowing with milk and honey. But 10 of them says, mm, but we look like grasshoppers in their sight. But the two of them brought a different report. They had a different spirit. Because I'm convinced Caleb had heard God Say, go. Because at 80 years old, he says, give me this mountain. G give me the mountain. I'm ready to go. Joshua followed Moses. Moses is dead. His time on earth is over. Moses brought him to, actually, he saw it from the mountaintop. But he couldn't take him in. Moses couldn't get him there. But Joshua, I want you to walk them across the Jordan River. And as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you because I made my people a promise that I was going to take them to the promised land. So, Mo so Joshua, here's your command. Go. Gideon, I reduce your army to the place that you can never anymore get into glory. And now that they're the place where they can't make it on their own and they'll have to understand I'm with them. The command now is go. Mm. Mm. Go. Paul, even in the midst of suffering, declared to live as Christ, to die as gain. Uh, the Gentile world was waiting on him. He had preached to the Jews and they had rejected him. 
and God sent him to the Gentiles. And I'm so glad that God sent him to the Gentiles because if God hadn't sent him to the Gentiles, <clears throat> Irvin Sims would not have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul heard the Lord say go. Peter heard the Lord say go. Died, but he went anyway. Ah, you have to go through some things sometimes, but go. Uh, many of us have gone through much, but we still have to go. He doesn't really give us an excuse. When he says, I've got the power, I'm sending you to Jerusalem to receive it yourself, that he takes all the excuses away. It's time to go. You have gone through, but God says go. Listen, saints, it's time to go. It's time to go. You hear me say, time to go. Go. I feel like just walking for a little while now. Go. Hello. All right, I'm sorry to wake somebody up, but go. Go. All right? Uh, that's what the Lord wants to say. Let me go over here. God wants to say to the musicians and to the choir and to this section, go. He wants to say to the mother's board, oh, my God, go. Thank you for going. I love my mother's board. Amen. They, they, they doing good. Come on, give the mother's board a great big hand. Amen. And... Uh, this section right here, I want you to know God is speaking to you as individuals. He's saying to you, it's time to go. And oh my God, the missionaries, and, and they've been down to Willow Guild and other places, and they're just getting themselves ready, amen, to do great things for the Lord. Here's the word for you. Go! 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 Hey, it's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go. Time to go. Uh, go to your family. Go to your friends. Go to your relatives. Go to your co-workers. Go to your neighbors. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills. Everywhere. Go tell it that Jesus Christ was born. And uh, when I was a boy, they, they had a song that says, Jesus said, if you go, I'll go what? With you. Preach the gospel. And I'll preach through you. Lord, if I go, tell me what to say. Because they won't believe on me. We sing a song here, guys. We're going to have to sing it more as we leave. But it says, as you go. What? Tell the world. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love. As you go, tell the world about Jesus. If I could say it like I feel it in my spirit, I'd probably say, go, 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 go. If I could say it like I really mean it, I'd probably scream it. Go! If I could get it out of me like it's in me, maybe I'd whisper it. Go. Somebody doesn't need a holler. Just go. Some people don't need it, but just a little bit. And they'll take off. Go. Some people just have to hear it once. And then Copeland and some of them have to have a go! Hear me. Hear me. The message from Jesus this morning and throughout this year is going to be go. Get a packet when you leave. Everyone, kids packets, adult packet. Get a packet when you leave. Join the Go Nation crew. Get your hat. Get your t-shirt. There'll be some Sundays. That's what we'll wear. We'll have a very brief service here. And we'll leave here. And go to assigned places all over this city. And we'll tell the world about Jesus. 
And we won't necessarily go where people look just like us. But we're going to go. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Here we are, standing in, or sitting in this place, having given, having heard a command from Jesus Christ to go. How shall you go? How shall you respond? How shall you accomplish your assignment? Who is it that you are going to speak to? Who is it that you're going to send a letter to? What youth program are you going to get involved in? What men's ministry? Who are you going to visit in the hospital as you go? Who are you going to buy groceries for? Who are you going to buy a pair of shoes? You don't like that tight dress? Buy him another one. All right? Buy him another one. Maybe they can't buy one right now. Mm -hmm. But you're going to go. And you're going to do the work of the Lord. Because we now are the hands and the feet of the Savior. The hands and the feet of the Savior. And we have to accomplish his purpose on this earth. It's more than getting up, going to work, come home, watch television, go to bed. It's more than that. There's ministry out there that needs to be done. God, I pray that you speak to our hearts now. Thank you for what Jesus Christ has done. We're saved because of what he's done. You said through repentance, repentance and remission of sin it should be preached and as it is preached souls will come lost souls will come to the Savior